All right, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and, and dive in here. Uh, this we usually do a webinar similar to this, something around video um, in recruiting, recruiting 101. As the summer here is winding down, we're getting ready for back to school. Um, that goes for for all the student athletes and families here on the webinar, as well as college coaches and college student athletes, kind of kicking things back into gear. Um, so this is one of our more popular, most popular webinars, and we're all uh, very fired up to have. A lot of you here um, to spend. We'll try to keep this to about 45 minutes. Um, if we go over, no problem, um, just based on questions. But the presentation prepared for tonight shouldn't be um, all too long. But we do hope to have it be action-packed, um, quality, and add a lot of value um, for you guys here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Tips to building a highlight reel skills tape uh, video that commands coaches' attention. If you guys have any questions, there's a questions feature on the panel here. Feel free to fire away. We'll be answering those all throughout tonight. Um, if we don't get to them, we'd love to have a conversation with you guys about them tomorrow or um, later in the week. All right, I'm Sean Lunkenheimer. I am our insights manager here at Sports Recruits. Grew up in New Jersey, went to Old Bridge High School and found my way down to North Carolina um, where I ended up running track at Wake Forest University. Had an awesome time, an amazing experience. Um, really loved getting up in the morning and dealing with student athletes, families all across the country, helping guide and educate through the recruiting process, sharing my experiences, my learnings, my challenges, um, and hopes to make this process as easy as possible, as streamlined as possible for all of you at home um, watching this tonight. Um, with, of course, the end goal, uh, my end goal, our end goal here at Sports Crews is to really help find the right fit school for you as a student athlete and a family at the end of the day to help set you up for success long term. Just a little bit about me. I'm going to pass over to Danny and Keith. Thanks, Sean. Uh, my name is Danny. I'm from New Jersey, played lacrosse and football my whole life, uh, played lacrosse at Trinity College up in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, like Sean, I work with families all day long answering questions about the process, about sports recruits. Um, one of the things I get the most questions about is video, highlight reels, skills videos. Uh, it it's, can be tedious uh, at times with video, um, and there's definitely some hoops to jump through, but we're going to try to make it as easy and as clear cut as possible for you guys tonight uh, so that you guys know exactly what you should be doing, focusing on, thinking about, like Sean said, especially heading into this fall period where coaches get back in the office, they kind of regroup after that long summer, they're on the road just like you guys are. So making sure that you guys are first and foremost on that coach's mind with some brand new video uh, is, is definitely a key heading into the next school year, uh, no matter what grade you are in, in high school or even before high school. Awesome. I am Keith Gitto. I'm from Massachusetts originally, and I played basketball at Ithaca College. Um, past two seasons, uh, well, I guess two seasons ago before last season, I was actually a coach there as well. Um, so I have a little bit of a unique perspective because I was someone who actually was getting highlight reels and evaluating players from those reels and seeing if it was someone we wanted to pursue as a recruit. Um, so I've seen a ton of the do's and don'ts that we talk about here, giving some good suggestions from my perspective on what coaches do like to see. And yeah, I've, I've definitely laughed at a few highlight reels in my day. So uh, we're going to teach you how to avoid being that one kid that the coach passes around the office for a, a bad reason. Awesome. So real quick here, um, just to give you guys a little bit of background, I'm sure many of you are familiar with sports recruits, who we are, what we do, our mission, um, and probably have dealt with Danny, Keith, or myself um, in some fashion, whether it's on a webinar, uh, a one-on-one -on -one conversation, um, or anything in between. But we're really excited about all the progress that we've made over the course of the last 10 years. Um, we actually had our 10-year anniversary just this year. So a lot of positive momentum, a lot of things going on here. I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of numbers, but we're in just about every NCAA sport here today. We've helped tens of thousands of student athletes find their dream school um, and continue playing the sport that they love, continue getting education um, at the collegiate level and setting them up for success uh, long term. Here's just a, a quick uh, sneak peek of some of the team um, here in our office in New York City that really wakes up and, and is laser focused on 
whether it's on the product side, the you know our, our profiles, making that as user friendly and as powerful of a tool as possible for you guys to communicate with college coaches, find schools that are a good fit, or um, somebody like Danny or, or Keith who are communicating with families every single day um, or around the clock to, to really help identify their needs and things that we can do to um, help you guys be successful. All right, tonight's agenda and we'll, we'll, we'll get this thing going. First off, we'll talk a little bit about the importance of video uh, in the recruiting process. There, are, like Keith mentioned, there are some, some do's and don'ts. So we will um, dig into what you should include in a highlight reel or a skills tape um, and what you wanna keep out. Where do I get video? How do I get video? What do I do with it? Um, all those, those questions that we deal with um, on a day-to-day -day basis. We do, have, um, we do have members of Sports Recruits on this webinar. We have non-members. So if you have a profile, there's a simple highlight reel form right on your profile. We'll go through that um, very simple process to get you guys all set up, um, you know, gearing up for this uh, school year. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end as usual. And um, let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Awesome, thanks, Sean. Uh, yeah, and like Sean just said, we do have Sports Recruits members and non-members. So for any non-members on the webinar, we're gonna refer to your sports recruits profile a few times throughout this webinar. Uh, that's how we're able to track what coaches are doing, what players are doing. Um, so when you see sports recruits profile, that's what we're talking about. Um, and everything we do at sports recruits, we like to back it with data. We do a lot of different reports and studies on our users, what coaches are doing, how they're interacting with student athletes. Uh, and one of the biggest drivers of activity by far is video on athletes' profiles. Um, so right here, you can see coaches are 11 times more likely to send messages to members with video on their profile than those without. Just as simple as putting a game from high school or preferably a highlight reel, any type of video up on your profile is going to make you 11 times more more appealing to college coaches essentially um, and can be a huge game changer if you're kind of sitting there and saying well shoot i'm not getting a lot of activity i'm sending messages but not getting a ton of responses um, it could be that video piece that's kind of holding you back there um, and then next one here sports recruits members with video are three times more likely to commit than those without. Uh, we have a commits page that gets loaded in real time. So you can see exactly what your peers are, what schools they're committing to. And on that page, you can see whether or not the student athlete has video on their profile. It's a little play button on that kind of banner that says the school they're going to. Um, and I would say 90% of them have that that icon indicating that they have video on their profile because it's such an important piece of this recruiting process. It's really the first thing coaches are gonna wanna look at and, and Keith can attest to this. It's video, then it's grades, and then it's where they can come see you play if, if, if you kind of pass those first two tests. Um, so that video piece is usually your first introduction to that coaching staff. Yeah, and just to follow up what Danny said, it's exactly true. The first thing a coach is going to ask when you reach out to them, especially if it's in a time when you're not allowed to fully contact them, um, may be for some video. They want you to proactively send it. They don't want to go to a camp without having seen a preview of you beforehand. Uh, and I know when I was at Ithaca, every single player that we recruited had some sort of highlight reel. Um, so, and that was, you know, a year and a half ago, and it's only gotten kind of more crazy as, as time's gone on. Awesome. And just real quick, um, kind of following up from having a profile, things like that. Here's just some basic recruiting ne necessities at this point outside of video. And we'll get into the necessities within video, but outside of just having a highlight reel, game tape, something you can send to a coach, you need to have an online presence, um, whether it's a profile or somewhere online that you can send college coaches to see all of your pertinent recruiting information. Grades, stats, obviously video, uh, event schedules, academic transcripts, whatever it may be, 
you want to get as much information in that coach's hands as possible in as little amount of work on their end as possible. You don't want them to have to download a PDF and then jump over to Huddle and then check out YouTube and then reach out to your guidance counselor. As many hoops as they have to jump through, the harder and harder it becomes for them to really take a serious look at you. So having it all in one place is, is key. Um, it makes it just easier for college coaches to evaluate you. And that's what their job is. That's what you want them to do, is to evaluate you as a student athlete. Um, and we just have a, a quick little image here of your sports recruits profile. This is a completely filled out profile with transcripts, video, GPA, club coaches, high school coaches. Um, and that's just to give you guys a sense of kind of the benchmark of what you should have at this point where you can send a college coach if they're interested in learning more about you. Just getting back more into the, the video piece of it. Um, like Keith said, it's really a need to have at this point. Um, when I went through it, it was a nice to have certainly, uh, but it wasn't a necessity. Coaches could get away without it. Um, but with that said, I played lacrosse in college and it was a lot more localized. You were reaching out to schools in your area. Coaches were coming to see high school games and summer tournaments, but video has made it possible for coaches to recruit nationwide. Um, and that's really why they wanna see video first and foremost, like, we, like we've been talking about. Um, and we like to refer to it as the trailer to the movie that is your athletic ability. Um, it's not going to get you recruited or scholarship offers or anything like that, but it's certainly going to get a coach interested to come see you play in person where that serious evaluation does happen. Um, it's going to get you on that coach's radar. If you're going to a recruiting event or a showcase of some form and you're just reaching out to coaches without any video, it's going to be really difficult for you to jump off the page and for them to write your name down as somebody that they want to come see play. Um, that video piece is going to be, like I said, that, that trailer that, that piques their interest. Um, and like I was touching on before, coaches can't be everywhere at once. So even if you do go to the showcase and you play lights out, that coach wasn't there and you didn't get any video, you're essentially out of luck. But if you did get the video and now you have it in this nice, quick highlight reel skills video format, you can send that to them and say, hey, look what I did this past weekend. Um, let me know what you think. And, and that's really key because coaches are spread out all across the country all summer long. You guys as a family are spread out at all these different events and showcases and things like that. So you wanna make sure that you're taking advantage of technology essentially um, and, and really playing to your strengths by getting the video um, when you do play well so that you can send that out to the coaches that you're interested in. Yeah, and just to, to double down on that a little bit, um, Danny mentioned the word luck. Uh, you know, thinking about a lot of the different sports that that are, you know, all summer long and you're traveling across the country um, and coaches are traveling all across the country as well. There are, you know, hundreds, sometimes thousands of other student athletes there on the same same day, the same weekend. The last thing you want to do is rely on luck that, uh, coaches on your field, um, you know, at, at that, that day or that time, that game, or it was just walking by and happened to see you, you know, do something spectacular, proactive outreach. We, we say this on every webinar, every conversation you have with any of us, it's all about being proactive in the recruiting process, especially around video, start early, gathering video, making highlight reels, sending those out prior to any event that you're going to getting on these coaches radars. And that's going to reduce the, um, you know, the, the chances of, you know, a coach just having to walk by, you know, a field luckily versus them putting you down, you know, okay, I, I know that Danny's going to be on field two at one o'clock on Saturday. Let me go and watch him because I've already seen him play. I've seen his academics. This is somebody that I think could be a good fit. Let me take some action versus just, you know, luckily being there on the sideline. Yeah. Like Keith said, uh, Every one of his basketball players when he was there recruiting had some sort of highlight reel. It wasn't the highlight reel that got them 
the offer from Ithaca. They didn't watch that three minute video and say, okay, this kid is in, but that video is what then put that athlete on that short list, like Sean was mentioning, and then they can pursue you further in recruiting. Um, so it's just an easy way to separate yourself from the thousands, hundreds of thousands of athletes that are reaching out to similar schools. If you have video, you're like we showed in the beginning, 11 times kind of ahead of the pack um, as kids that don't have it. Yeah, and just to touch on one kind of point about that as well is a lot of these schools are, are way, not more necessarily under-resourced than you think, but don't go on the road at, during the summer as much as you think. When you look at a school like Ithaca, they might go to four or five tournaments over the summer, uh, and the chances of you intersecting with them without kind of reaching out to them, giving you your highlight tape is pretty small. But we as a coaching staff when I was there would go out of our way to certain tournaments to see kids who caught our eye on tapes. So that is something that's also really important to consider is coaches can make their travel decisions based on going to see kids that they feel would be good players at the school. That's awesome. a great point. Um, so coming in here, we're going to talk a little bit about how to pick the right clips for your video, um, whether it's a skills video or a highlight reel, the system is the same. You want to make sure you have the best clips in your highlight reel so you're putting your best foot forward uh, and we'll kind of explain how we think about it uh, having gone through this and made thousands of highlight reels with our editing team um, how you can kind of make it easier on yourselves uh, the second bullet point i think is the most important um, the athlete should be the one that reviews the footage uh, don't make mom or dad sit through six hours of a tournament uh, that they weren't even at and try to find out the best clips. You know yourself as a student athlete better than anyone else. Um, you're gonna know when you played well, where your plays were. It's much easier for you to go through and, and find those clips than your parents or a coach or a friend. Um, and when you get to college, no matter what sport you play, you're going to be watching video. Uh, it's a huge part of college athletics, reviewing what you did in practice and games. Uh, so it's just practicing good habits, being able to watch yourself and evaluate what you did well, what you could improve on. Um, so make sure that you're the one reviewing the footage and, and kind of picking out the clips and review as you go. Uh, if you went to 10, events this summer and you got film from all 10 of them and you didn't look at any of it until now it's going to take you a very long time to sift through all that and find the best clips so try to do it as you go if you went to a tournament on the weekend now it's tuesday you're back at home take a look at those three or four games that you just played in um, and try to do it little by little so that you don't have to kind of cram at the end of the summer and sift through all this video uh, that's just sitting there. Uh, we use and, and we try to teach uh, families how to use this five-star system. So indicate the clips that you like and then equate each one with a star. Um, one all the way up to five stars. Your very best clips, five-star clips, the ones right below that four star clips and all the way down. And now you have this long list of clips from all these games and you can just pick out the four and five star clips to put into your highlight reel. Um, we'll kind of touch in a little bit why you only want the four and five stars. I mean, it's fairly obvious you want your best plays, um, but you want to make sure that your highlight reel is short and sweet. Uh, we pulled actually how long college coaches view videos on sports groups. We can see how far into the video they get. Uh, and the average viewing time is three minutes and 18 seconds. So if your highlight reel or skills video is 10 minutes long, they're not seeing over three quarters or almost three quarters of that video that you spent all this time on. Uh, make sure it's short and sweet. 15 to 20 clips is kind of the, the sweet spot that we found, which gets you between three and five minutes. Um, college coaches have a lot of things to do every single day, a lot of athletes to evaluate. Uh, they're trying to get a quick assessment 
and move on to the next one. Um, and they're trained to eva evaluate a player very quickly. So if you have your best clips at the fifth, very end, the fifth minute, um, a lot of the times coaches won't get there. Put your very best clip first and kind of use that same pattern throughout the video. Um, and then the last one, just be honest with yourself. Get a second opinion, whether it's a coach, a friend, an older brother, parent. Um, once you've kind of compiled the clips you think are the best, see if someone else agrees with you. Um, you do know yourself the best as, as a student athlete, as an athlete, but it's always good to get a second opinion on things like this. Awesome. So yeah, now I can uh, talk a little bit about what should go in your video. It can be kind of difficult. Obviously, there's a lot of people in this webinar that range uh, in various sports, um, but there's a few things you should always try to focus on. And a coach knows what they're looking for. Um, they know what they want in a highlight reel. Uh, I've seen a lot of highlight reels that include um, some things that are not so great, which we'll talk about in the next slide here. But what's really important is showing your something like your game IQ, um, whether that's with passing, if you're playing volleyball, whether it's how you're setting people up, um, some of your versatility. So if it's a, a two-way sport, something like basketball, don't only show offensive clips. They want to see some plays on the defensive end as well. Athleticism is always a really good thing to highlight. Uh, and then we recommend using the five-star star system that Danny talked about. Um, you don't want to put clips in there that you know include, say you're playing basketball and you have a great assist and it's a blown layup. That's not always the best thing to put in, but still continuously over and over again, it's included in people's highlight reels. Um, you know, it's not necessarily on you, but it just doesn't look good. You probably have another pass that's similar to that you, you can find. Um, really important and a super important thing is isolation effects. Um, this is gonna be something like a circle or an arrow that's included in the video that really highlights who you specifically are as a player. And that's important because coaches, you know, you don't know how they're watching this. They could be watching it on their phone. They could be watching it on their computer. Um, so they don't always know what you look like. They don't know if you're, you know, um, five foot seven with blonde hair. They might be looking for a number. You want to have a circle. You want to have an arrow before every single play that shows, okay, this is who it is. I can track them with my eye and I know exactly who I'm looking for. Because uh, there might be three players on the field that look exactly like you and it's just difficult to tell. Um, and then the title card is also something that's really important, but you want to keep it pretty simple. Um, see a lot of people, and I'll talk about this next slide as well, that try to do too much on there. Uh, name, position, contact information. Sometimes a club and club coach is good, uh, but keep it pretty sweet. The coach should have your information um, on something like sports recruits. So that's really what uh, they would, they're not focusing too much on gathering information from that highlight reel. Yeah, I would say one other thing to be can to keep in, in your mind here is that coaches see the little things that happen during these clips. So if you have a clip where maybe you make a good play or you score a goal, but you don't celebrate with your teammates or you put your head down after making a mistake or something like that, they look at the, the little things, the intangibles in these videos as well. So just be cognizant of that and make sure that any one of the clips you include puts you in a good light in terms of says here game IQ, but also sportsmanship and how you interact with your teammates and your coaches, um, because those little things are definitely noticed by college coaches um, as much, if not more than what you're actually doing on on the field or the court, uh, whatever it may be. Um, so things that shouldn't be included in the video, uh, and this is all some pretty important stuff to pay attention to. Don't need all of your recruiting information. Like I said before, you don't need to list, you know, every single stat, every single part of your transcript. Sometimes GPA is important depending on what schools you're trying to target. Um, but that's exactly why you have something like sports recruits, something like an online presence that really is your resume. Um, so you're just attaching the video as sort of a, a parlay into looking at who you are as a student athlete. So you want to host all your information somewhere else other than the video because a coach, one, can't copy and paste it. They take, might take them a while to transcribe the email address. You want to make things as simple as possible for them. Um, so that's why it's really important to have the video in addition to an online presence or an email that you're sending to them. Um, clips below four stars. You should be able to get enough film where you can find four or five star clips. 
uh, it can be pretty difficult. And I saw actually a question that just popped up is, should we include a five-star clip if it's bad quality? Um, that can be tough judgment based on what, how bad the quality actually is. Can the coach see what's executed in the play? Yeah, then it should be all right, uh, depending on how good of a clip it is. You can also probably rate it down a little bit if the quality is not good. That's also an important thing to think about. Um, but poor footage uh, quality is, is a really important aspect of, of looking at highlight reels. Um, we see people that if, it, if it's super grainy and the coach can't tell what's going on, it's really not even worth it. Um, you want to have make sure your footage is as clear as possible and don't include too many of those plays that have grainy footage. One or two is not going to kill you, but having a, the whole thing be almost unwatchable is, is never a good look. Um, and then deceiving video effects. Coaches don't want to see slow motion. Coaches don't want to see sped up video. I specifically remember we had a, a student athlete send us a video where it was like clearly sped up and he was trying to highlight the fact he was a point guard, trying to highlight his speed. That is never a good thing to do. Uh, you know, college coaches know every trick in the book. They've seen thousands of student athletes highlight reels. They don't, you know, they don't want to see slow motion plays broken down. They can break it down themselves. They've been doing this for years. They know exactly what they're looking for. So you don't need to lay it on a platter for them. They know what they're looking for in these videos. Um, and then the things that are personal preference, um, we like to say music. College coaches typically do just mute the music. Um, be really smart with what kind of music you're putting on there. Don't use any music with any curse words, obviously. Um, music is always good to have rather than it be silent, but it's true. A lot of coaches are just clicking through and immediately putting it on mute, depending on what you're listening to. Um, a picture in the title card, is it, it makes it look nice, but again, coaches uh, don't really focus on those things. They want to see the player. They're not too worried about pictures, and I get parents asking all the time, hey, you know, I want to put some pictures up on sports groups. I want to include some pictures, kind of like a picture slideshow and highlight reel. Think about it from a coach's perspective. They're looking for the player. It's great that you have these nice still shots of your son and daughter, but it's not necessarily what the coach really needs or, or wants in there. Um, home video versus professional video. I've seen some parents that have some great, you know, they're filming on their iPhone, they're on their iPad, it's on a tripod. They're doing a great job tracking the ball. It really is up to uh, you guys in terms of the quality of the video. It's always nice to have professional HD, but if you have the ability to do it at home, that's always really great. Um, high school versus club, that's another thing. Um, that's one of the hardest things with highlight reels is measuring the level of competition within them. But that's what coaches do. They can look at the other players on the court or on the field and kind of get a gauge for where you are as a student athlete. So it really doesn't matter. It's, it's really up to you what, what season you want to highlight. Um, and then highlighting the event or the opponent Again, that's also personal preference. The coach isn't really going to care that you played uh, on field four at uh, Mid-Atlantic Showcase against a certain team because they probably don't know much about it. Um, they may have been there, may have not been there, but it's it's really not going to matter too much. So that's really also up to you. Yeah, there's there's a, a couple questions in here in regards to like the editing video. Um, for some sports, uh, like softball or baseball, uh, you can see clips where it's slowed down to show like technique and things like that. That's that's fine, um, and that's commonly done. Um, we're more referring to kind of mid-game slowing things down or speeding things up with the intention to kind of deceive the viewer on the other end, because uh, a lot of the times, like Keith said, that's seen right through. Um, and then with the music piece. Um, we answer a lot of questions of what should I, what song should I put in my highlight reel? Uh, it, it really doesn't matter. The one thing though is, is be smart. If you do choose to put a song and the coach does happen to listen to it, make sure that it's an appropriate song. Um, it's not going to get you recruited if the coach really likes the song that you picked, uh, but it could be a red flag if you pick a song that's completely inappropriate um, and the coach is playing it on loud on his computer in the office. Uh, so just be smart about that as well. So in terms of where to get the actual video, it's a, this is a lot of questions we get as well um, when we have parents calling in. So there's a few places you can get video from. Um, some of them are pretty obvious. So if you're at an event or showcase, it's most likely going to have some videographer there uh, it's always good to ask the coach if they have someone filming or the event coordinator, if they have something going on with in terms of film um, and 
with it being 2018 and this being so prevalent, it's it's pretty typical. Uh, high school can be different in terms of some conferences require you to have film. Um, some schools aren't necessarily caught up to that. Uh, if your high school is not filming, you should definitely make a recommendation to the coach. Try to have that done. You can pay a student athlete, buy a camera, pay a student athlete, you know, eight bucks an hour to do it. And it's really worthwhile. Um, a lot of other families, there's always that team parent that is posted up with the camera in the stands. That's always a great opportunity to get some video and ask around. Usually they're happy to share. Um, you could film the games yourself for a pretty cheap setup. You can even film the games on your iPhone. Uh, just get a tripod. I've seen them. You want to film from an elevated surface, but uh, I've seen parents doing that pretty regularly as well. Um, or there are people, there's videographers out there that just do this for a full-time job. You can hire them to follow you around all season. Uh, it's probably not the most uh, inexpensive way to do it, um, but there are people that are, are willing to do it. If you just do a quick Google search, you can probably find some people as well. Awesome. So this is actually um, more geared towards members, um, but this is if you want us to build a highlight reel for you uh, through Sports Recruit. So we have an in-house production team that we talked about that's built tens of thousands of these things. Uh, they know what uh, coaches are looking for. And in terms of the process itself, all we can use any and all footage you guys have, uh, but you uh, need to send us the timestamps for the plays you want included. So this is an example of the highlight reel form, which can be found on the profile. Or if you're not a sports recruit member uh, and you do choose to purchase a highlight reel from us, you will get sent this um, and have access to it. But essentially what you need to do is fill out the information. So source name would just be the game, start time of the, the play you want included, end time of the play you want included, and then a quick description, whether it's a goal, ground ball, shot, something like that, and then save the draft. Um, take a quick look at it. See. Uh, see if it's all everything we want um, and then submit the form to our production team and we'll talk about in the next slide how you actually get us the video if, if it's not something that we've filmed an event for so in terms of sending us footage and this is probably what i feel the most questions about uh, parents call in and say well i have this footage how can i get it to you our production team is very good uh, they'll, they'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure we get all the footage you have um, We've had you know, people share our, us on their huddle passwords, make sure we can get film from there, crossover, all those things. Um, the easiest way to probably do it is transfer it over the web. We use this site called WeTransfer. Really simple, you just drag and drop it onto WeTransfer. We can download it, Dropbox, Google Drive. We've even had people send in thumb drives with all the uh, plays on it. Um, so we can be really flexible with that. And I know we've never really had an issue with this uh, and it's the number one question we get. So I just wanted to address it on here. Um, and you can also uh, email editor at sportsrecruits.com um, to figure out, you know, how we can work with you guys if you decide to get a reel made. All right. Sorry, I've been firing. There's a lot of questions that are coming in. So appreciate all of you guys uh, asking those and not being shy. Um, let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and, and do a little bit of QA, but before we do so, just to let you know, we will send this webinar out uh, recording to everybody, um, all participants here. So if there were, if your son, daughter, mom, dad, whoever, anybody in the family um, wasn't able to attend tonight, we'll get this to you tomorrow, um, hopefully around lunchtime, if not before, so you can share uh, with the rest of the family. And um, Tonight, actually, after right after this, we're going to send out an email, too, with our contact information. If anybody um, wants to learn more about sports recruits, wants to chat recruiting, wants to talk about highlight reels, memberships, anything like that um, pertaining to your specific um, position right now as, uh, in, in the recruiting process and, and what your individual needs are. So let's, uh, let's pick out a question here. I'm a rising junior with September 1st right around the corner. What should I be thinking about and doing as this date is coming up fast? I'll, uh, I'll start that one off for us. So I guess it really all depends on where you're at or, or really the work that you've done um, up to this point in time uh, in the recruiting process. So again, I'll, I'll stick to my, my guns here about being proactive. If you've been working um, if, if you've been working since freshman year, building out your list, keeping coaches up to date with all of your um, academics, video, athletics, tournament schedule, things like that, you're probably feeling pretty good about going into this September 1 um, timeframe. 
what I would recommend doing is if you have film, if you don't have a, a uh, most up-to-date highlight reel, is getting one prepared and getting that into coaches' hands as soon as you can. Because as September 1 hits, coaches are going to be able to communicate full on with student athletes. They're going to have a list of students, student athletes ranked one, two, three, four, five. And they're going to work their way down that list and try to get as much information, as much up to date information as possible. Try to get um, kids, families on campus, get them uh, you know, to, to visit and really try to get these kids, these families to verbally commit as soon as possible. If you haven't done the work up until this point, it's not too late. Each division, um, each conference is going to operate on a little bit of a different timeline. Um, but again, you're going to want to start as soon as you can um, researching schools that are a good fit for you academically, athletically, socially, financially, location, um, how far from home, and get on their radar. Send them messages. Let them know that you exist. Let them know all about you, who you are. Um, and again, tonight's all about video. Video is a great way. Um, to, to get on their radar and let them know a little bit more about you as chances are, you know, they're not going to be on the sidelines anytime soon um, for, for you. So um, if, again, just to kind of reiterate that, I know there's a lot of information. Probably the most important thing is to have most up-to-date information ready to go and get that in, the, in coaches' hands as soon as you can. If you can do that prior to September 1, that's great. It's that proactive mentality, and it's going to make September 1 and beyond a lot um, a lot easier, a, a bit more successful for you. All right, let's see here. I'm a 2021 grad and I do not yet have a profile for recruiting. Is it too late to get, to get recruited? Um, it's definitely not too late to get recruited. Um, going into your sophomore year is really kind of the sweet spot. Um, it's really you should start being as proactive as possible going into it, depending on the sport you're playing. And it's most of them at this point. There's going to be communication rules that are limiting coaching, limiting coaches reaching out to you. But that doesn't mean they're still not on the hunt for student athletes in your class year. So in terms of an online presence, we've preached it over and over again. It's something you have to have. Um, it's similar to, you know, if you're a parent doing a job search, having a LinkedIn has become super important. Having something like sports recruits, your essentially online resume is a very important thing. Um, and I have student athletes and parents talk to me all the time, say, hey, we're not like worried about this until junior year. There's a lot of schools that fill their recruiting classes early in, in student athletes junior years. And some student athletes get left behind simply because they're not even looking at schools by that point, because the athletic timeline is different than the average student timeline. It's more competitive if you want to be a student athlete. The schools are a lot more competitive in terms of trying to get you to come there. So you want to do all that work beforehand. You want to have somewhere like sports recruits where you can go on, log on to the profile, have your information, but also see which coaches are looking at your videos, looking at your information. Um, so now is a perfect time to get started going into your sophomore year. And it's really becoming a need to have. And you don't want to you know, look back in a year and a half regretting not getting started. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Here's a question that's specific. It's probably good for you, Danny. Um, if you're a football and lacrosse player, do you need one highlight reel or should you break up your sports? Yeah, I can definitely answer that because I was a football and lacrosse player. Um, but if you're a two sport athlete, three sport athlete, um, whatever that looks like for you, you want to have a reel that is focused on lacrosse and then a separate reel that's focused on football um, you can and I've seen it and um, it can work really well if you have one or two clips of the other sport that you play in your reel so say you have a football clip in your lacrosse reel it can show some versatility and overall athleticism um, but you don't want to have it like let's say half and half um, if you're reaching out to a lacrosse coach, have your lacrosse highlight reel. If you're reaching out to a football coach, have your football highlight reel. Um, same goes for if it's volleyball and soccer, whatever the sports are. Uh, make sure that you have a highlight reel focused on that sport to send to that, that coach that you're reaching out to. Cool. So it looks like we have a good amount of, uh, I guess, eighth graders, rising eighth graders on here tonight. I'm um, seeing a couple of questions about, um, I guess I'll just kind of loop them all together. Um, is it too early to start the process as an eighth grader? 
I can uh, start that one out. Um, for us, we firmly believe, and we say it all the time, it's never too early to, to start researching schools and getting organized and figuring out what might be a good fit for you. Um, pro being proactive in this process is key. Uh, you don't want to be sitting back and kind of waiting to see what coaches reach out and see who knocks on your door because there's so many kids that are actively reaching out, sending videos, sending grades and, and things like that. Um, so being proactive is key. If it's eighth grade and you have an idea of what you want to, where you want to play and you think it's a good fit school, uh, reach out to that coach. Say, hey, here's my, my video, my grades. Here's where I'm going to be in the fall. Um, there's no harm and there's no rules on student athletes reaching out to college coaches. Um, there are rules in place for college coaches responding and, and getting back to you. Um, but it can never hurt to get on their radar and, and just get your information in front of them. So um, definitely don't think it's too early. And we work with a lot of families that are rising eighth graders, even going into high school freshman year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's never too early to, to get organized. Awesome. Let's see here. I, I'll just answer one that I've seen a few times here. Um, we do have examples of the highlight reels that we've made in the past, thousands of them. Um, it's on our website. If, if one of you guys could just grab the link and uh, maybe send it to everybody. Um, but yeah, you can you can look at all the examples. Uh, you could even purchase right through the website there. Um, and yeah, we, we do have that on our website and we can send that to you guys. Um, no problem. Awesome. All right, here's a question around uh, which are more beneficial, prospect days or showcases? That's a that's a great question, and um, not not directly tied to video, uh, but it could be. Uh, but that is a question. Out, I would say that's second, right behind video questions, is about prospect days and showcases. Um, it, it totally depends. It depends on where you are in the recruiting process. Um, if you're earlier on, maybe freshman year, sophomore year even, um, usually a showcase is better bang for your buck where you get to play in front of 50 or 60 coaches as opposed to just that one school's coaching staff. Um, but if you're a junior or a senior and you have three or four schools on your list, um, playing in that small setting at a prospect day can be really valuable. Uh, so it all it all just kind of depends and um, I'd be happy to talk with that person further about that. Um, but yeah, it really just depends where you are in the process and what schools you have in the mix. Awesome. Uh, so again, we're getting, a, which is good, a bunch of questions a little bit outside of video, um, which I'm more than happy to, to answer here. Um, let's see, can you get an offer as early as September 1st of junior year in high school? Um, I guess I'll tackle that one. So it's all really based on sport. Um, they've changed a lot of the dates for a lot of the sports to be that September 1st date when coaches can finally contact student athletes. So yeah, you can get an offer, an official offer then, um, you're still not signing anything. It's not, uh, you know, you're not signing your letter of intent. It's typically, um, would be an offer that you would accept verbally, uh, up until you sign your letter of intent. Uh, but you still see coaches getting around the rules some ways when you see, that's why I'm sure everyone in here had knows a student athlete that's committed before those dates. I was talking to a father today whose um, daughter was a, an eighth grade softball player who had already committed to not such a big name school, which was surprising to me, but softball just changed the rules on their commitment to be similar to that. So there's ways coaches are getting around it. Um, but yeah, September 1st is the first time coaches are, for a lot of sports, allowed to actually communicate with you fully. So um, over text message and email uh, and phone. Awesome. Okay. Um, seeing a couple of questions, we covered this a little bit, but just to uh, reiterate, how long should a highlight reel be? How often should I update it? And how many uh, clips, how many clips should that include? I could start yeah. us off here, or 
I'll, I'll start us off. You can uh, right. jump in, Danny. You got it. So um, again, we recommend having 15 to 20 clips total um, to create one highlight reel. That should be somewhere between three to five minutes. Um, again, I think it was Danny who touched on it. On average, coaches are going to watch these just a, just over three minutes. So you don't want to have anything too long. You don't want to have anything too short. That's not going to really, um, you know, give give yourself the opportunity to showcase your your skills to these coaches. So uh, 15 to 20 clips, three to five minutes. And um, Dan, if you want to jump in, talk a little bit about I guess about how often you should um, should update update film or, or have an updated highlight reel. Yeah, you want to make sure that the clips are within that calendar year. If you're a junior, you definitely don't want footage from freshman year. Um, it's if, if it's a really outstanding, amazing clip, maybe you have one in there, uh, but try to make it as recent as possible. If you can, um, ideally you want it from that most recent season. So for example, a highlight reel from this previous summer, uh, and then you make another one combining maybe the fall and the spring. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure that that video is up to date and those clips are, are recent just to show where you're at as a student athlete. Um, obviously you get bigger, faster, stronger, so you don't want clips from when you're in eighth grade, if you're a, a junior or a senior. Awesome. Uh, all right, we'll do a couple more here and we'll wrap this up. Uh, are you able to see which specific colleges view your videos and how many times it has been seen? Uh, I'll just tackle that one here real quick. So yes, if you if you have a sports recruits profile, um, you do have the ability to see when college coaches are viewing your video. Um, you can also see when they visit your profile. You can also see when they visit your uh, transcript. So any click, any interaction that they're having with your profile, you're updated um, in real time. So it, it really helps to um, give you give you a little bit more transparency, a, a bit of an idea of how these coaches are interacting with your um, recruiting information. So if a coach keeps coming back, watching your video, checking out your grades, probably a good sign. If you're sending a bunch of messages to the same coach and all they ever do is look at the profile but never really interact, that could tell you something else. So full, full tracking capabilities um, on the profile. Let's see. Um... bunch of questions around samples. We'll send you guys um, links to um, highlight reels, skills tapes that we've made in the past. I actually put that in the chat on there. You did? So oh, it's uh, great. Yeah, it's in the chat right now. If you guys can go ahead and see that. Awesome. Okay. Um, looks like we've covered most of this stuff here. I Try got one. Me. You got yeah, one? That's, yeah, that's specific to sports recruits members again. Um, but in terms of having like a full game on there, what you should have in your video section, should you take stuff down uh, on sports recruits, you can host all your video in that video section. So whether it's a complete game, tournament film, highlight, old highlight reels, whatever it is. Um, and there's actually an option to do show or hide. So you can just show your most recent highlight reel and maybe your best half from the last season or something like that. Um, and you can still have all that video in there and it can just be only for you to see, not visible to college coaches. Cool. Uh, let's see, here's a question just around privacy. Um, there's lots of information on the sports groups, profiles, grades, bio, info, videos. Um, how do we protect the privacy of student athletes? So those are not just um, hanging out there online on Google. Um, you can see, you can find profiles, but it's just very basic information such as your name, um, you know, where you go, your your school, your club, and your grad year. All of that other stuff is locked unless you're sharing your profile with a specific college coach. So um, privacy is definitely something that's a, a huge concern and a, a huge priority um, for us here at Sports Recruit. So you guys can feel safe that. Um, all of that stuff is is thought about on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's not just um, just out there floating around the web. Yeah, and sports recruits, every single college coach has access to it for free, which is something we, we really like to highlight because there are some other recruiting services out there that do limit and make coaches pay a membership. We don't do that at all. Um, they most of the time don't even have to register with us to get onto your profile, so uh, it's really easy to use from their perspective as well. 
Awesome. All right, let's uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and um, call it there. Really appreciate all the questions. Um, I mean, there are probably hundreds of questions that are um, flowing in here right now. So we'll we'll sift through those in the morning. And if we weren't able to answer them tonight, um, we will send a personalized uh, response to you in the morning. Also tonight, we'll send um, you guys our contact information um, as well as some additional information on highlight reels, memberships, anything like that. If you have a need, but um, pretty simple. I'm Sean at sportsrecruits.com. Danny's Danny at sportsrecruits.com and Keith, Keith at sportsrecruits.com. And um, we'd love to have a conversation with as many of you guys as possible, help out um, in any way that we can. But um, again, appreciate your time here tonight tuning in. If you have any webinar ideas, a couple of people did um, chime in some ideas. So feel free to reach out to us um, in regard to webinar ideas. We'd love to um, Love to dig into some new topics that um, you, you guys feel a need for at home. So um, huge thank you um, to everybody for being here tonight. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you found value um, and it was a, a worthwhile uh, 45 minutes or so here. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you guys um, over the course of the next couple of days, couple of months. And uh, best of luck with wherever you guys are at in the recruiting process and gearing up for school, which will, which will be here before you know it. I'm sure all the student athletes are uh, very fired up to get back in the classroom and um, seeing, seeing their friends and, and uh, new teachers and all that good stuff. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll draw the line there. And uh, thanks again. And we'll, we'll talk with all of you guys soon. Thanks, thanks guys. guys.